we got the case bond on both sides um, I went ahead and I lubed all the transmission bearings no lube on this one and um, getting ready to put this together Yamaha these things come stock with a Phillips head you can't torque a Phillips head if somebody knows how to do it you know send me an email because I certainly don't know how to do it so what we do is uh, I get these kits from Vito's these are just the center case bolt kit they're fairly inexpensive they send you a t-handle we're not going to use the t-handle because you can't torque with a t-handle either but it, it enables us to actually torque these screws to where they're supposed to be so the next step is we're going to heat the inner race of this bearing the same way we did on the other and believe it or not I'm going to slam these cases together barehanded put those bolts in I'm going to turn that crankshaft that's going to fly like nobody's business and um, I'm no, there's no adjustment needed so again that's how we like to do it but I'll show you how it happens here's where we're at same same gig as last time we're going to get the inner race of the uh, crank bearing on the right side nice and warm and then uh, I'm just going to pop this thing right on the other side of the case and we'll see if we can do this live for you it's good take it it boys and girls take it rotate it next thing to do is and you want to try to do this in a pretty timely manner is get your uh, get your bolts in here I'll tell you a little trick when you're putting these bolts in I see a lot of stuff people saying well yeah you gotta go ahead and put them in a piece of cardboard and all of this other happy stuff and it's just not true um, when, the, when you put the bolts in they should all be sticking out approximately the same amount and it's that easy you can see this this something's wrong here different length bolt just go ahead and get all these bolts in where they go again we're not torquing there's gonna be a sequence to torque it but I'm just getting them just getting them down there flush with the case. Like Alright, I went ahead, I didn't show you the sequence, and, and yeah, I'm sure the Yamaha manual is going to tell you something different. I, I don't really care what it says, to be honest with you. The way that I've always done this, if I'm going to get a leak, I certainly don't want it here in the crankcase. I treat these as two completely separate entities. So, in other words, I'm going to torque in a crisscross manner, manner on the crankcase and then I'm going to move over here and then I'm going to start building the torque up but I'm really concentrating on this I do not want an air leak going out of here so we concentrate more here and then start working off to the other side when you start here start on this side and then start coming crossway this way and work try to work from the inside out and that's kind of how we do it um, but anyway without any manipulation of the crankshaft at all. All I did is slam this thing together by hand, no pullers, no tools, and uh, torqued everything up, and that's what's supposed to happen. Rolling right over. Next thing I'm going to do, now we oil the crank bearings. Anybody that knows me, talks to me, you know, calls, asks questions, has engines built here, knows I love uh, either Motul or Maxima Super M two-stroke oil and that's what I use on the assemblies is uh, the Maxima Super M so I'm just gonna just bear it all nice and lubed up believe it or not and I won't mention any names but there's some pretty famous engine builders out there and no they don't go on the blaster forum that actually believe that it's better to put a two-stroke engine together on assembly with no oil I don't believe that, but uh, that comes from a very credible source. Uh, this guy is, he's big. He's in the Hall of Fame of motocross, but they don't use oil when they put these together, and I don't understand why, but I do. Crank bearings are all oiled. Next thing I'm going to do is put the crank seals in, and I'll show you how we do that.
the bottom end gasket sets that we use, and I've used many, many of these things in blasters, uh, is the Weissco bottom end kit. It's, it's affordable, it's a little cheaper than getting OEM stuff, and the quality is just as good. Uh, it comes with the oil pump gasket, the clutch cover gasket, and all the seals, and that's what Weissco calls a bottom end kit. We want to prep these seals before we actually install them, and what I use, um, this is PC seal grease made by Pro Circuit. Contains special chemicals that actually impregnate the rubber of the seal. Uh, what happens is if you put these seals in dry on a steel shaft, what's going to happen? It's going to start burning holes in it. Believe it or not, the rubber will win over the steel. You start getting big grooves and you get air leaks. This is going to stop that from happening. So what we do with this stuff is just uh, take a little out and spread it on the inner lip of the seal. And we'll go ahead and lube all these seals. Well, just the crank seals right now. I've got both of my crank seals, the inner lips, lubed with the PC03 seal grease. The other thing that I like to do is I take Loctite 243, which is just blue Loctite, and I actually put it on the outside edge of both of the seals. Some people will tell you it doesn't help, it doesn't hold, it, it does. This stuff does its job. It's going to fill any voids if there are any in there, and there aren't. I mean, we prep these cases, but just extra insurance policy and helps me to sleep at night. The other thing that we do, <clears throat> which is pretty neat, we built these. This is just some kind of phenolic plastic material and we've actually cut a recess into it and cut this part, the inner diameter, the same size as, uh, as the crankshaft. All I use these for is blasters. We do so many of them that we found the need to just start making special tools. And what I'll do is I'll get this seal right where it needs to be and then just take this driver drive it home. No questions, in there perfectly square and in there perfectly recessed. Alright, maybe some of you are wondering why I wait to put these seals in. If I put this seal in first before I put the crankshaft in and send the crankshaft through, there's a slight possibility, and it's happened, and it's happened to me, and if it happens in here it's going to happen to you eventually. There's a slight possibility that you can roll the inner lip of this seal and lose the spring. You'll never even know it. So by doing it like this, again, uh, we're not allowed to make mistakes in here. So we just kind of get that seal on there, roll it on. There is no doubt in my mind that that spring is still intact. And I do the same thing. I take the driver, I put the driver on it, and just smack it in there. And it's going to set it perfectly square and perfectly recessed in place where it needs to be. Again, just check the crankshaft for proper rotation. Next step is put the seal retainer. the primary shaft, the drive shaft, and look at this, look what's going on. So this is rocking. Somewhere in its life it's been bent. Uh, so that's not going to do its job, that's not going to retain that seal because it's actually bent out this way. A uh, real easy fix, just put it in a vise and knock it down a little bit. You want this, this is a clamp. Again, insurance policy holds that seal in there, so we're going to adjust that. Went ahead and repaired the uh, seal retainer so there's no flex in it, it's actually going to do its job now and then more blue Loctite, the uh, 243 on this screw and at this point you're going to need a little impact driver just get that tight that's all it takes, you're done next piece to install is a bearing retainer and uh, it only goes on, it'll go on either way but I mean it's pretty obvious that's not right. So it goes on this way. Same thing, blue Loctite, and just a drop is all it takes on the uh, threads of the screw. And use your impact driver to get them seated, just a couple little wax, and that's it. Next piece I'm going to install is the cam lock. And uh, these, can, these can really drive you crazy sometimes. It's just a lot of patience. You can get it together. I'll tell you one thing, they're a lot easier when the shift start isn't welded on. And what I'll do is install this first and then put the star on after and just use some leverage, move this thing back, drop it all together and go from there. But same procedure, blue Loctite on the threads of this bolt. It's kind of like a little game of cat and mouse you got to play with these things. Uh, what I did is I already put my blue Loctite here and it's, it's really loose but this clip co a spring comes up and retains the, the lock mechanism and then the other part of it goes behind the case. 
Uh, it's still very loose, so what you kind of got to do is work this thing down without, you know, bending it. There's no pressure on this yet. And then get that spring in behind it. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'll just get a screwdriver and I'll push this in and then I'll get some leverage over here, move this out, and then just bring everything down nice and even. That's what this should look like and you have it done correctly. And again, seven and a half foot pounds of torque on that bolt with blue Loctite. And you've got this part of the spring resting against that part of the case. This part of the spring on the lock. The lock, you can make it fall in wherever it wants to. Uh, one thing I will caution you on, this bolt is shouldered. So make sure that this actually moves once you get your torque. Easy way to do that is just, you know, come in here and make sure it moves freely. That'll cause you big transmission problems if that's not installed correctly. So the boss on this bolt has to be inside of the hole on the lock mechanism. The next part we're going to install is the kick idle gear. Um, and, and the only thing I, that's, I think is imperative you change, um, and I'm going to ask you a question, how many times can you reuse one of these clips? Anyone that said uh, never is, is correct. These are brand new clips. We don't mess around with this stuff. This is a 59 cent part. Uh, I'm not going to take a chance of this thing failing because I'm too cheap to spend 59 cents and put new parts in. We don't charge you for this. So we just put them in as part of the build. And what this is going to do, if this clip, if you reuse this clip and it comes off, and you know, everybody I hear I'm always referring to the Yamaha manual, read it. They'll tell you not to reuse them. But if this clip pops off, the next thing that happens is this washer pops off. This thing bangs around, takes your whole clutch basket out, uh, probably breaks your kick drive assembly, and then these pieces all get into your transmission. Um, so, you know, we don't, we don't mess around. Change those clips. So it's a Yamaha part number. You can get it from me, like Yamaha deal. You can order it off my website. If you're doing this yourself, make sure you change these clips. The washers, I look at these things. If, they're not, if there's a nowhere, I mean, there's no danger in reusing these. Just lube everything up. But I'll show you how I put this together next. These are just some snap ring pliers. And uh, you open it as little as possible. And just slide it down over the shaft. Get it in its notch. And you're ready to go. Next thing that happens is the washer goes on. A bit of oil. Gear. A little more oil. Washer. And then the last clip. Next piece I'm going to drop in is the uh, shift shaft and just make sure, because I've seen them come in backwards, I've seen these on the outside, make sure this clip, the spring, is on the inside and that this spring is sitting like it is because it'll, it'll close off. I mean just make sure everything's right. A little, a little bit more oil. Make sure the splines are clean. And then just drop it right in there. That's it. Next piece we install is a seal wear ring. And uh, what I like to do is just put a little 1194, 1104, whatever you got, Yamabond. Just a little bit of seal around this. and then just drop it right in. Make sure you don't get any of the stuff on the seal when you put it in.